what on earth are these cigar shaped looking weird towers for? It could be for water towers, it could be a silo tower. Well, they're definitely not them, but they are a tower for storing things. They're actually a tower for storing people in times of danger. They're actually a bomb proof shelter above ground called the Vinkel term. Right, let's go and have a look round it, I'll look inside and I'll give you some more information about these things. I think the door is, it's could be two inches or 50 millimetres, it's very, very heavy. This Vinkler term had several floors in it. It also had two ways of going in, just to make sure that they could actually, the local residents could, uh, could actually get in here quick enough before the Allies started bombing. Apparently, in the Zorzan area, there's over 19 of these uh, Vinkler terms built. This is the air filtration system in the basement. I think you've got a hand crank there just to uh, try and get some fresh air in and any sort of gas then you can hopefully you'll get it out. I think in here I think there's another pressure system as well usually just to force any obnoxious gases out so at least you wouldn't be gas when you're sat inside here. There's some of the seating for um, any um, people who want to hide from the bombing. Right let's go up and have a look at some more of these floors. And there's another way in. So in other words, you can get as many um, uh, people in here as quick as possible. There's more floors upstairs, but obviously it's sealed off, so we've got two floors to look at. Right, what the manufacturers would do to test these type of, of um, um, air raid shelters, especially for the noise, they, they decide to bring goats in. What they do, they put some of the goats in the middle and they strap some of the goats a bit closer and they put some of the goats right against the wall. And then they start to um, create um, a noise of, of, of bombing going on, or even shelling actually, to be honest with you. And the idea was, was because goats hearing is very similar to human hearing, then it gives you an idea of how far you're supposed to be away from the side so you don't become deaf. And I think, I can't remember how many it was, but it's got to be probably about 600 mil or something like that, at least. But the more you stand in the middle, the better the chance you're not going to get um, death through um, allied bombing. They even had toilets in here as well. All told, there's about seven floors in here, capable of taking about 250 um, people who wanted to uh, get out of the way of the, uh, of the bombing. But they reckon they could hold up to 500 people. Like a plug of such, see the rubber ring on it, and it fits into there. So, if there's anything like gases come in, they can take that out, stick that in, and no doubt lock it down. And that'll swell up and it'll stop anything coming in. And there's a communication system there, I would assume, to any um, control that was watching out for uh, Allied bombing or anything like that. At least they get to know uh, when it's all clear. can actually be up to about nine floors in these. I think I already said six or seven. They were 23 meters high, which is about 70 foot. And there's something like 30 and a half meters wide, which is about 45 foot. The design like this, pointy at the top and obviously sloping at the sides because there's less chance of a bomb hitting these things. If they hit it, the idea is to bounce off it and then hopefully bounce away from uh, the, the actual um, air raid shelter itself and explode somewhere else. These terms, these towers had two entrances in, one there, one there, one to the first floor, one to the second floor. It's just so they can get um, people in as quick as possible in case the Allies were bombing. Well, these pointy shaped cigars, or sugar beet heads they're called as well, there's about 200 built in Germany, but the greatest um, amount that was built is in a place called Zorsen, where we are now. I think one of the reasons why is because um, the High Command de Her, the uh, army, as they had their offices here. 
so I think they probably needed them actually. Unlike in England where our, our red shelters were underground, they were in the subways, they were in caves, anywhere they could put them underground for safety, here they couldn't because the water table, I think the soil is just too, it's just not the right type of soil to build one of these things, or it's underground, I think it's because of probably flooding as well. So they had no choice but to build these type of um, uh, air raid shelters above ground. Get a little hole sticking out there, the sort of exhaust that, it's just to try and get any circulation of fresh air inside the actual tower itself and then they'll come out that way, in other words the air's filtered and it's nice and fresh and that's the way uh, the uh, excess air comes out. A bloke called Leo Winkel designed these type of towers. He didn't build them, but he had something like about seven companies that built them. Normally there's a plaque on the wall to tell you uh, which company built it. I'm going to walk around as best I can. I can't actually see the plaque that tells me which company uh, actually built this, um, this Winkel term. Just like I said before, probably about up to about seven companies that um, were given the task to build these type of um, air raid shelters. Only um, Mr. Winkel, who invented this thing, um, for, out of wartime, especially when they were just left like this, he suggested they could use them as water towers or maybe uh, grain silos, but I don't think it ever happened. Uh, some of these Winkel terms had a metal top on them and a lightning conductor. If you look at that there, right at the very top, there's a lightning conductor and just slightly below it, there is a uh, metal top on it. They say out of all the Winkel terms, all the uh, red shelters designed by Leo Winkel um, survived the bombing raids, except for just one. Uh, I'm assuming it was a direct hit, I don't know. But uh, out of all them 200, only one was destroyed in the war. I'll put some information in the description as well. If you ever decide to come here, then at least you know what you're looking at when you get here. Apparently there's 19 in the area. I think the vast majority are actually still standing, so this one is available from the, um, uh, if you just look behind me there, it's a museum about the, around this area. Oh, by the way, uh, all the lettering inside there, all the words are in German, nothing in English, so if you're coming over from England, go on the internet and download it first.